If you enjoy the show, please consider signing up for our weekly bonus episodes available from the hard times via Coil. Coil is a new subscription service that allows you to enjoy web monetized content in your browser while supporting sites you love in real time. For $5 per month, you gain access to bonus content from Coward Hour, The Hard Times, Hard Drive, and over 20 other comedy websites. For more information, you can go to our website, cowardhour.com. There you can also find the link to our Discord and sign up for our mailing list. Thank you, and enjoy our wretched podcast. We are in. We're back. Mm -hmm. Normally I yell something at the beginning, but today I thought, let's let Nick talk You have absolutely, because you have no caffeine in your body. Well, yeah, that's true. Day four, no caffeine. You're a completely different person. Am I? I think I like it better. Well, that's good, because I guess it's me. Yeah. Uh, Is it so different? Yeah, you just, you exude a different energy. Hmm. I'm, I, I pick up on those things in a very big way. <laughs> I do. I, I'm not going to, I have to, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to boast, but mm-hmm. I, yeah. I'm a little bit of an empath. Yeah. No, well, Nick's third eye has been opened by doing LSD 400 times. <laughs> Hang on. My, <laughs> my girlfriend sent me something so mean this morning. <laughs> you sent me this, let me see. I, I, let me, let me try to find it. I, I can't uh-huh. remember if she texted. Oh, here. Yeah. She sent me this meme. It's like two brains, like telepathically communicating with each other. And it just says, I'm an empath. Sometimes I can tell how people are feeling simply by deciding how I think they feel in my own mind <laughs> and instantly believing it. <laughs> Damn, this woman understands you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, made me laugh. Really. She me that. I'm like, Jesus Christ, babe, I haven't even woken up yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I feel. Damn, you're... Your bay is hitting you with group chat energy, which is just a harsh roast before you're even awake. Oh. So it's the... First thing you see. I love, we tease each other so much, I really like it. It's, 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 it's like, I'm like, yeah, this is great. Mm-hmm. The, you know the problem with most women, you tease them and they get upset. Because mm-hmm. they take your words at face value. Uh-huh. <laughs> which, you know, you can't be doing that with yeah, you words. Yeah, you need to find a woman who puts no stock in the things you say and believe. Yeah, I... I, I I found a yeah, woman yeah. who's just like, words are inherently meaningless. There's no such thing as a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> Even the worst word you can think of. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, she doesn't believe that. I'm just mm-hmm. kidding. Yeah, I want a quick, uh, quick, quick throw out um, to to uh, Bay if you're listening. That is not what I believe. Right. And typically, any beliefs that I express on mic about what I think relationships should be like will be goofs. Today she uh, she texts I'm on high alert because she texted me um and she's like hey just so you know um I was listening to an episode of Coward Hour and your plan on how to go back in time and trick me won't work because I don't believe in angels and I'm like well what is this even about that was my plan <laughs> yeah that was you didn't even say that I said that <laughs> that's what I thought yeah I said but that. it took me uh, like <laughs> hearing one of our riffs out of context like not remembering what that what it is I'm like. Well, this could be any number of things. <laughs> also, your bae doesn't believe in angels? <laughs> red flag. That's a red flag. <laughs> She's very religious. I think she just doesn't believe in, like, literal, physical angels. She, she doesn't believe in angels. In, well, if she's, if she's true, if she's part of the true religion, she doesn't believe in angels taking on a uh, humanoid form, which, mm-hmm. good for her, she did her homework. But, uh, yeah, she. I mean, you'd have, to, you'd have to disguise yourself as a flaming spinning wheel or some shit. And just yeah. Like, Marissa. To, to trick her. <laughs> I just did it again. Because gotta I, stop doing. I that. gotta stop doing it. Because mm-hmm. when I get when I begin to play out a scene in my head, I need to be addressing a subject, and I can't think of a fake name. Mm-hmm. Well, but, it's always Bay. <laughs> I know well, that's, that's what That's the power of Bay. I there's no specific Bay. Bay is it's like a a hive. Sure. When, when I refer to Bay, it could be my Bay, your Bay. It's just all a collective Bay. Right. I guess that's true. Hmm. <laughs> All right, well, sorry I did it again. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so, I forgive you. Thank you. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's fucked up. That you didn't say that. I said that. And and if I remember, you were against. And I, yeah, and I don't think I was. I don't like when I got the. I it wasn't. I was not in trouble, but uh, I am so fearful of this podcast destroying everything that I love and care about that mm-hmm. immediately I was just like, oh no. <laughs> what what was this riff? Well, Bay asks me all the time. She's like, "Should I listen to the podcast?" I'm like, "No, probably not." She's like, "Okay, <laughs> it's great. End of conversation." <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I cannot get Bay to stop listening to the podcast. <laughs> it's, you got your Bay to stop. Li- my family doesn't yeah. listen. My Bay doesn't. Dude, it's, you got your Bay to stop listening. It's the reason that you met. <laughs> It's it's true. <laughs> How awesome is that? Damn. <laughs> that's some big dick. I just That's a big dick maneuver right there. It is the most ideal situation. We mm-hmm. met because she listened to the podcast, stopped listening to the because yeah. And eventually you'll have gaslit her so harshly that she's like, I don't think Nick has a podcast. No, I didn't know. Of course I don't have a podcast, baby. <laughs> I would never betray you and our family like that. They just use my picture on the hard times. Yeah. <laughs> I I was a stock uh, photo model. Yeah. You see, it's actually both Brendan. He does voices. <laughs> yeah. See, he does. He d- Brendan is this normal guy, mm-hmm. and he plays these two characters who are just a mess, a complete mess. <laughs> but it's all theater. It's all theater of the mind. Mm-hmm. The mental illness is all complete. It's not really there. Yeah, it's true. It's just you just think that it's there because of acting. <laughs> <laughs> I am such a brilliant thespian. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, it it is. It's truly the ideal situation because, like, yeah, she just doesn't. Okay, I think she tries to listen sometimes, and she just like gets bored. And I'm like, this is great. My family <laughs> stopped listening. You literally, everybody close to you, you can, you cannot get them to stop listening to this podcast. I can. It is a huge problem. It's, a, <laughs> it's because you are way more. So- I bet Bay's family has listened. <laughs> of course they have. <laughs> if she's this enthusiastic about it, and she's trying to like sell you to them like sell you know what mm-hmm. i mean and she doesn't seem to be aware of the fact that like you know <laughs> it, it may not I think be in, a good thing i think in order for her to uh admit to herself that she needs to stop like uh so in order for her to like process that she can't share this with people she would have to become aware herself how horrible this is yeah, and she loves me too much. She's not willing to let her brain do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I will say, I, th- I would, I don't think the content of the show is so horrible. Like in, uh, not anymore. Not anymore. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think the sh- the current show is particularly shocking. But I do think that we just be saying some shit <laughs> that, that, that probably shouldn't be public information. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is honestly the biggest liability at this point is that like there's just abso- anybody who wants to know and I was always an open book but like I don't know man it's like I just left a book out yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> at this point the book it's like that book at the at the front table of a beach house yeah yeah it's like everybody look through sign your name <laughs> yeah yeah it feels like honestly, tell us how your trip was it kind of feels like everybody's fucked the book <laughs> <laughs> The book is just covered in cum and blood yeah. from dick paper cuts. Yeah. <laughs> like, All the pages are stuck together. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody lined up and fucked the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I get the book back and I'm like, boy, damn, a lot of people have been through this, huh? <laughs> I thought maybe a couple people would read it. I didn't think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I didn't think there would be thousands of people fucking it every month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was under the impression that it would be red. <laughs> it's like not even getting into the the number of people involved. Right. First of all, I didn't think even one person would fuck it. Yeah. I, and I, it appears no one read it. No, yeah, well, no, the uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at it. The ink's all smeared now. It's all fucked up. <laughs> yeah, man. It's uh... in this metaphor. It is mostly men, much like the the listeners, much like the audience of our <laughs> podcast, <laughs> which is 
fine. I'm mm-hmm. glad. I'm glad that like of the few female listeners, I, I'm glad that yeah, yeah. I'm glad that it worked out. <laughs> I'm glad, what, what if I? What if I had to resort to dating a man <laughs> because <laughs> we only like, had male listeners? <laughs> We should say that Nick was not attempting to date listeners. Right, no, of course not. Yeah, we should definitely would, put that on the record. Uh, look, uh, look, I didn't I didn't send that first DM, all right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I was yeah. unassuming. Basically, she took advantage of me. It's true. Much like our good friend, Chris D'Elia, who we were trying to reschedule that, uh, that, that episode. He keeps canceling on us. It's I ridiculous. Know. It's like, buddy... I don't know if you know who's getting canceled here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we thought that he said I have to cancel. He said I am canceled. <laughs> no, we're going to get him on. Yeah, he's trying to help us. He's like, guys, I would love to do the show, but I don't think you want me to do it. And we're, we're like, like guys, oh, using reverse psychology. Ah, now we really want him to do it. <laughs> yeah. How come he's not in anything anymore? <laughs> 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 no, I was no. I my intent was was not to start dating a listener, but mm-hmm. the fact that it worked out that way, I mean, come on, <laughs> you are I mean, so I proud mean, of yourself. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, thank God that uh, you swung once and connected. Always do. I always connect. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an empath. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just mean like imagine if if you <laughs> imagine if you were just like. <laughs> Like responding to DMs, fingers crossed, and like two or three didn't pan out. Oh yeah, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. No, I, I shouldn't say no. But I, I think, I think, I guess I'm just not surprised because everybody who, regardless of gender, um, something that I really like about this podcast is like I get DMs, mm-hmm. multiple DMs a week, like on the. Coward Hour Instagram, my Instagram, Twitter, mm-hmm. both accounts. And just like, you know, people, and I guess that's the nice thing about the show because we're willing to open up. Like, just in the past week, like, I've had, like, people open up to me about, like, you know, like, things that they're struggling with, like, mm-hmm. addiction and stuff like that. And, like, and I'll get into the weeds with these guys. I really like talking to, to the people about that, so. Same here. You know. Um, I get DMs and uh, not not so much on the Instagram because I, I don't mm-hmm. check it. That's all Nick. Um but yeah, if you send something to the Coward Hour Twitter, we're both going to read it. Uh, we have an email, cowardhour at gmail.com. Yeah. If you want to send us something well above the character limit, some just fucking deranged, like, literal standing, like the Eminem Dude, song. Th- so much standing in my DMs. Mm-hmm. And I have, yeah. to, I have to stand back. Just death threats. But uh, I'm... That's t- the... That's how we know that we we're, we're, that we really made it, is when we, when we get just a full-on... Like love letters slash death threat. So, yeah, yeah, I want to. It's like threatening to like we will be buried in the same coffin. Yeah, I am like, obsessed mm. with you. Yeah, and and so I have to be the one who 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 is your absolute ending. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to force you to wear my skin. It's incredible to love something so much that you want to consume it completely. But I guess that actually happens a lot <laughs> if, if, if you if you know anything about true crime. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait to get true crime. There's a couple. I've thought of a couple like uh, watermarks where I'd be like, that, "That's when the podcast really made it." One is we wind up in some sort of um, like Opie and Anthony subreddit type YouTube documentary. Mm-hmm. That would be great. I f- really, I hope and hope that does not happen. I hope we're not the focus of it. I hope it's not our documentary. Yeah. Ideally, it'd be like, uh, it'd be like. Uh, uh, Robert Ben for Associates, Nick Holder, Sean, <laughs> Brendan Craig. Yeah, I'm shocked we weren't. We were. We were. We came very close to being in that one. <laughs> there's, or I did at least, because there's there's a clip of a stream that he was doing at a mutual friend's house like 30 minutes before I got there. <laughs> and I'm like, if they had just picked a clip from later in the stream, I would have been in this documentary. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how Seth MacFarlane was almost on the plane on 9-11. <laughs> You're just like, ooh, that would have been bad. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God that Uber was slow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Holy <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's see. What were the other ones I was thinking? Um, uh, I mean, Damn, I, I definitely had some ideas. You need the other the day. caffeine, dude. 
I need caffeine. My brain does not work. I think it's going to level out. Yeah, your adenosine receptors, they're like craters right now, dude. Mm-hmm. Your brain is just pocked full of... Four days. Yeah, you got, mm-hmm. you'll, you'll break through. I will. The mm-hmm. headaches have subsided mostly. Mm-hmm. It's tough, man. You were addicted to a substance, and not the one that you thought. <laughs> <laughs> I am addicted to many substances that I no longer consume. You're addicted to things that aren't that even aren't substances, <laughs> <laughs> which is honestly, frankly, tricky to do. Mm-hmm. Eh, it's not that tricky. Um, Isaac is addicted to online video games. He is addicted to online video games, mm-hmm. and now you get to see it again. Yeah, he's really got. He's actually very good about controlling himself, though. Like oh, he like okay. has it. He has a set time. He doesn't flip out. He he understands when he has to stop, and he has very frank discussions with me about how he has to stop. <laughs> and I'm like, well, stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's that easy. Does he sit in a chair? No, he sits on the ground. That was part of. So I came in. So it was very funny because I brought like this really nice like um. Uh, basically like this like open cabinet where I was keeping my records and I brought it to the new house and I was like, we can put the game consoles in here because the wires can go through the back. We can store everything really neatly. And he goes, it's a little too tall for me. I'm a floor guy. So I like to sit on the floor while I play games and this will put the TV about three inches higher than where I need it to be. So I was like, okay, so we'll just not use this piece of furniture, I guess. <laughs> Get him a pillow, like a Japanese dinner table. Yeah, I, well, I, or, 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 but he won't do it. I don't think he'll do it. I think he really likes He the, loves a hard floor. He likes the Do being, you have carpet? No. Oh, God, no. No, it's uh, that we, we. It's funny, because we do have a carpet. His parents sent him a carpet, but it's just rolled up, <laughs> in, like resting against one of the walls in the living room. I think he really likes the sensation of feeling his bones pressed into, like, <laughs> filthy tile. <laughs> God love him. You know. I'm sure that it must be soothing like a weighted blanket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, um, like, you know, I like a nice soft surface because I'm very fat. I'm very soft. Right. Uh, whereas Isaac is sharp. Right. All all aspects of his body are sharp. So it needs to, he needs to be in a similar environment. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, uh, it's like something. <laughs> it's, it's it's like lizards like hot weather something like that. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> Damn. He's a it's a it's a really interesting house. Oh fuck. I think I left my that's fine. If my cat's there when I'm I get back if she's not that's how the dice rolled. <laughs> <laughs> you say about the only thing you truly love. Yeah, I mean, I'm silently panicking right now. Uh, well, there are these what cat- did you do? Well, no, I just, I left the window open because it gets like an oven in my room and I have the fan in it. Um, but these cats come by and they're probably going to come by tonight because it's been cool out. And Rita has tried to like knock that fan through the very, through the already breaking screen to like get out and uh-huh. get these cats. So we'll see. She might, <laughs> she might just stick her paw into the spitting fan blade. So. <laughs> Maybe at the very least she'll be there when I get back in some fashion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I de- we're hoping that happens because then she wouldn't be able to make it too far. Yeah, I don't imagine she'll make it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can get a God, necklace. God, your house out. is a nightmare. It's a f- dude. It is unbelievably bad. It's a, <laughs> the 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 power. The problem is the 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 power keeps going out, and we're not sure why. And people, and uh, they're just... Oh, that's been happening everywhere, though. That's been happening here. No, prior to the rolling blackouts. Oh, okay. Because... (laughs) The city decided to test that out on your house. On us. Well, our house is so shitty, and they're just like... Our one roommate just always has this boy who seems to be suffering from a concussion, and he'll just be in my house in the morning. Also, the wiring in the house is fucked up. So the light in mm-hmm. my room, there's a there's a. We're gonna circle back to this boy. <laughs> this is an odd boy, and and he just and like I literally sometimes I'll just be like, when you say he has a boy, he's got a boy. That is it a sexual relationship? Is is it a captive boy? I really can't tell. But the but the boy is 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 really I can't tell sometimes if he's spent the night. I can't tell where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't know the origins of this boy. But <laughs> but but he's finding himself in our abode, <laughs> which is a problem. The boy is here. I mean, like literally this morning. It's a good thing I wasn't fucking jacking off because like my room has like this this big window uh-huh. and like I have to open the window because it's so hot and I still want to jack off sometimes. You know, <laughs> and, and and this there have been times in my life where I can relate. Yeah, 
And so I'm ground level, so like to get to the, you have to walk by my window to get around to the back of the house, which is sometimes how you can get into my roommate's room. So this morning I look up from the movie that I'm watching, and the boy is just standing like outside my window, just like in the alley, like, and he waves at me, and I'm like, no, (laughs) please. Get out of my We can't feet. have a waving boy. No. Well, so the so the fucked up thing about my house. How old is this boy? When you say boy. Uh I he in his early 20s, I think. But mm. but that's only because my roommate's in his early 20s. If I if I saw him isolated, I would think he was like 15. And and, <laughs> and Nick, and, I think he is 15. He is not 15. He can't be 15. <laughs> I I don't like. I don't want to even think if there's just some fucking like <laughs> some some captive twink in your home. Yeah, if he's skipping school. I guess school's <laughs> not in session, but <laughs> well, he would still be skipping. He needs to be in a Zoom class. <laughs> some live truant. Yeah, just an an underage interloper snaking <laughs> his way through my halls. I don't stand for it. <laughs> Do not snake through Nick's Don't, walls. please. So so the biggest problem with, with my room in the house, the wiring in the house is all fucked up. Mm-hmm. So my room has one outlet behind my bed, so I had to like plug a power strip into it. No light in the room, but there is a socket, and there was no light bulb screwed into the socket. So when I first got in there, I screwed a light bulb into the socket, um, but it wouldn't turn on. There was no light switch in my room that I could. There was no light switch. I had, a, I had a I had a socket with no light switch. So there are there is a light switch in like down the hall in the dining room, and that light switch turns on the. I don't know how it does this. It turns on the lights in the dining room, the lights outside, and the light in my bedroom. <laughs> There's no way to separate these three lights. If one is on, they're all on. So now I see why it was unscrewed. So it's frustrating because, because at night, I'll want the light on. Uh-huh. So I'll have to like light up the outside of the house and the dining room, and people turn it off, and I lose light while I'm like reading and stuff. And then in the morning, <laughs> in the morning before I wake up, my light comes on because somebody's fucking eating food. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I, it doesn't. It, <laughs> Nick, <laughs> lamps are not expensive. So I have a lamp. The uh-huh. the problem is the outlet. There's only one outlet in my room, and I've got a power strip, but I've used all of it because Rita's got an electric litter box. I'm charging my computer. Um, I'm I've got the pl- fan plugged in and all this stuff. And for me, it's already a really small room. For me to put a lamp in there, there's really no space for it. Uh huh. So, I tried it. <laughs> you got to get one of those like uh those circular lights that like you you slap and it turns on. Just oh, stick it yeah. to your wall. My friend had one of those back in. <laughs> do you want to borrow a lantern? <laughs> no, I do not want to. Like, I can live with. I, I'm a pretty <laughs> heavy sleeper. It's just it's just spooky that like I have no control over my lights. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes and sometimes they're not even I mean look from again from a housemate I can accept that but when there's just a strange boy wandering through the house flicking light switches on and off and uh-huh. now it's affecting my life who's le- who's letting this boy flick the lights I, I, when the boy seems to just come I'm in I'm visualizing like a He's wearing like a an eighteen hundred sailor suit. Yes, <laughs> no, he's not. But yes, I understand. <laughs> How crazy would it be if I was like, "Oh, do you know him?" <laughs> Just extremely pale skin. Nick, I think your house is haunted. I think, you, I think if there's a boy, from there's the a 1800- fat little boy who burnt up in the past. <laughs> a charred boy. Yeah, there's this boy with no skin who's constantly turning the lights on and off. Well, Nick, who do you think that could be? I think it's one of my roommate's friends. (laughs) (laughs) I had to deduce. (laughs) Now, using my powers as a detective, (laughs) I would imagine he's supposed to be there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, He came in one morning. I was, like, barely awake. Uh, this kid has the energy of somebody who never sleeps. Uh-huh. And so I'm ba- I'm coming out to make eggs and he just like rounds the corner. I guess he's been in my house. <laughs> it's 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 <laughs> so early for him to be in my house and he goes, "Man, he goes, did your hair get darker since the last time I saw you? Or is it just the way the lights hit? It's got like a like, beautiful sheen like yeah, the way they the, the way is the lights hit Michael Peña. <laughs> he talks like Michael Peña with a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes, "Yep." He goes, "Yep. The way the lights hit in your hair. That's a good look." <laughs> I 
<laughs> Get this boy out of here. And, and I have so much patience with people. I really do. I could not even bring myself to respond to him. <laughs> the way the lights hit mm. your hair, that's a good look. That's nice. Yeah, he was like, did your hair get darker since the last time I saw you, which would have been the day before. <laughs> the day before when he was in your home. Yeah. I hate it. Who is this boy? Does he have his own home? I do. I don't. I've had so many interactions with him. I do not even know his name. <laughs> He's just an element in my life. <laughs> so despite like knowing everybody in this house, it seems like you're the Jason where it's like you just enter, go to your room. Don't talk to anybody. We all do that. <laughs> the, the house. It's not a good house for, for congregating. There's there's no there is no area of this house that's comfortable or inviting. The best thing you can do <laughs> is just like army crawl through the fucking living room, get to mm-hmm. your room, shut the door, yeah. <laughs> wait for the next day to come. <laughs> I can't wait to see Isaac's house someday, like when he's married and just everything is designed that it's right from the floor. So the pictures, like all the picture frames are three feet high. Well, the cool thing, <laughs> they never get furniture. <laughs> He's like, why? It's a waste of money. Mm-hmm. I mean, the cool thing about... He eats food out of a dog bowl. <laughs> <laughs> the cool thing about Isaac and his girlfriend, if they do move in together... I guess mm-hmm. I shouldn't talk about Isaac's plans for the future. <laughs> <laughs> I guess this is weird. I guess just because I know information doesn't mean I should share it publicly. <laughs> <laughs> ah, who cares? <clears throat> um, no, I mean, I- Isaac and his girlfriend are really cool. They're like two of my favorite people to hang out with. Mm-hmm. And I think the coolest thing about them is they're pretty much on the same page about the state of things. <laughs> so, like, their house might actually be like that. But they'll both be okay with it. <laughs> that would be good. That would be great for them. <laughs> That'd be funny if, like, eventually the floor isn't enough and they have to, like, jackhammer in and, like, dig him a little square that's lower. Dude, he would have loved, you know those houses in the 70s that had, like, that where the living room was, like... Was lower, yeah. Was like, lower. Like Don Draper's apartment. Dude, I want that. So I want... I don't remember mm-hmm. what you call that. Like... Where the couches are, like, built into it. Yes. And there's a fireplace. Dude, I yeah. want to live in a place like, like the Brady Bunch house. Dude. I want to. I. I fucking know. Something happened to, uh, like, just architecture and and homemaking. And, and maybe this was like mainly a privilege enjoyed by like the upper middle class mm-hmm. white people of the seventies. But goddamn, I love those open floor plan houses. Yeah, you know, just like carpet, stairs with no railing. That, there's probably a good reason why that stopped. But, you know. <laughs> but stairs with no railing that are just like rectangles jutting out of the wall. Yes, there's. It's so easy to just. You could see. How many children must have died between those <laughs> stairs? Like, yeah. how many castrated boys <laughs> <laughs> just slid on socks? Yes, into just the <laughs> the sheet metal stairs. But yeah, man, I have a real fantasy about living in a Brady Bunch house. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, dude, I want a fucking mustard couch. What happened to wood the wood color- panel? What happened to the color mustard? People really turned on it. It's a beautiful color. It's a, mustard, and let's not forget. Uh, for- avocado green. Absolutely. I lo- Look, we got to go back to the days of a nice green toilet. Or pink. Yeah. Why can't... White fucking bullshit. Why can't my... And I'll tell you the genius of um, having your furniture the same color as condiments. Now, you can eat way less inhibited, dude. Mm-hmm. If your couch is mustard, you're having hot dogs inside. <laughs> Just like on the couch, watching mm-hmm. TV. <laughs> Hell yes! Yeah, well, this white trend has got to stop. Mm-hmm. Frankly, it's probably how houses look so shitty now. They, like, uh, I, I, my, my brother. So he's living with my parents again. Uh, he's waiting to go to tech school. So in the middle of, he's just like refinishing the house for them. He's they're just giving him projects, and um, he's like, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of the mantle. And I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, um, mom and dad want me to take out the fireplace, so I'm thinking of using the bricks for, like, a barbecue pit or something. I'm like, take out the fireplace? Why would you do that? Yeah, and he's like, well, you know, they're going to put in, like, a, a gas one and then hang the TV above it. And I'm like, that's too high for a TV. It's That will look so shitty. Dude, there's mm-hmm. something with, how old are your Keep, parents? Uh, 60. Th- this generation specifically, I guess, like, Gen X, boomer slash Gen Xers, mm-hmm. They have no reverence for, like, 
keeping culture in the way that you adorn your home. Home, like their parents understood it, but like my parents are the same way. They're just constantly throwing shit out. Like my house looks like people just moved in every year. Yeah, I don't understand it. I mean, the the coolest house that I was ever in was um my he actually listens. My buddy uh uh Rob, Big Rob, um his dad was like a guitar tech uh for like a big rock star and he would just leave for like months at a time. And when I went over to his house, we were just smoking cigarettes inside fucking giant record player. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Fucking just just like uh Led Zeppelin posters on the wall, and you looked around, and it looked like a set from, like, Stranger Things. I'm like, this rules. It rules. Oh, mm-hmm. it's so cool. That was my my grandparents' house um, before they moved to their place in Florida, which, like, they retained a lot of their... They, they moved a lot of stuff with them, but just the fact that, like, it was the house that, like... It was a fairly big house, um, and it was where all their kids had grown up, and, like, the room where, like, my mom had grew up and her brother and all that, literally untouched since they left, and it had been, like, you know, 20 years Mm -hmm. or more than that even and you go up and like all the posters are still up the record collections were still there all the art that they had amassed like little trinkets and just adorned the house were constantly on display like you walk through that house and you you, the history of it hit you immediately original furniture all that shit Mm -hmm. and um and it was cool because they were like fucking hippies and shit so it wasn't like a a lame old person's house but I, i just feel like Nobody seems to have any reverence for that at yeah. all. I would, but even a lame old person's house, like, um, has some, character. Yeah, like sometimes when I'm uh, when I'm wistful, I look at Zillow for my hometown. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> just so many of these houses. Like, there's, I was looking at this house as a little one story thing, uh, built in the fifties. Some guy moved in in the fifties, lived there until his death, Hell and yes. um. <clears throat> It was beautiful, you know, just got, like, a cross on the wall, wood panel. Yeah, dude. You just hear Hank Williams when you look at the Zillow listing. Nobody buys a house anymore that they can envision themselves dying in, and it's a problem. It's really a problem. Yeah, everybody, they decorate their house like a realtor would tell you to, like, sell it. it, Yes. But I don't understand, because, like, every time I'm looking through, not that I'm ever going to buy a house, Mm -hmm. ever, I'll fucking die renting brendan you'd be surprised I, I, me and bay are always looking at like um like fixer upper houses on instagram where it's like you can buy this whole house for twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars but it needs some work and i look at houses, i'm like i wouldn't do a fucking thing to that house like i would drop the twenty thousand there's termites get them out of there but like it looks original i want to live there yeah no i like every time i see a house that hasn't been fucked with i'm like ooh, i would pay more for that well, you shouldn't do that. Don't no. don't no, tell a real, don't do tell that. a realtor that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> Man, I fucking like before I had Bay, I just I I dreamed about like, yeah, I'll buy some shitty farmhouse in Central PA. I'm gonna have a dog, um, not a little dog. Like I love little dogs, but in this scenario, I have like a German Shepherd or oh, something. We, yes, yeah, I understand. It's just me and the fucking me and the hound. And I, I refinish everything. I, I have the barn. Uh, I, I hunt rabbits in the back. Mm-hmm. Um, garden. And uh, just slowly, I have less and less uh, contact with the outside world until eventually I die. No one knows for months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the dream. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh... I would like to maintain contact with the outside world, I think, but, <laughs> you know, I would like to be part of the community. I want to live in the house for Mandy. <clears throat> she, well, she's st- she was still friends with the convenience store clerk, Brendan. They were still no, I know. chips. I was joking about the oh. zero contact yeah. with anyone, but I just want to live in an old, weird fucking house in the woods. How sick is that house, too? So sick. It would scare me, though, those big open windows, like, looking out at the woods every night. I think that doesn't scare me because, like, the cottage... Where I was just, you know, the the one uh, where I was staying, my great grandfather built it in like the forties. It's like this mm-hmm. little it. The property has be in in like Pigeon, Michigan, where it is, is like everything's becoming really devalued there, and everybody's like turned all the houses into these like you know multi million dollar like disgusting fucking like because mm-hmm. it's Saginaw Bay, and the cottage is just like little was like built modestly, like hasn't changed at all. It, it, it's it's the same as it was in like the forties. But it has big windows that just, like, look out. Mm-hmm. One window that looks out to the Saginaw Bay, and you open it up, and, like, dude, it thunderstormed so hard the first night that we were there 
that like the whole house was rattling. Like the windows were rattling, the waves were choppy, the 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 forest out the left window was just like shaking and the sky was lit up and it was just like Mandy. But it was That br- sounds beautiful. It was amazing. It was mm-hmm. better than any movie I've ever seen. This four hour thunderstorm. I was just watching the trees get fucked up. <laughs> it was awesome, dude. Damn. So I, I I'm I'm kind of want to live in a goddamn cabin. The ca- yeah, it's a shit. My family's probably like it's it's way too much money for us to all like keep it up every year. So I think they're just gonna like I don't know. Everybody who's responsible for it. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be getting wistful about this. No, it's With, okay. It's, it's the 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 cost is shared by like all of our extended family, and we're all just like, yeah, we're not we're not gonna do this. So trying to go one last time next year. Mm-hmm. And maybe we a should bunch shoot of- a movie there. Um, we, I would have to check with, uh, with the Keitels. We could do that. <laughs> we could do that. So this fucking solitary man in his cabin. Yeah, we could literally mm-hmm. do a feature length thing of that thing that we shot in Joshua Tree. Cause it's the <laughs> same vibe. It's, it's literally this, the, the mm-hmm. like, it's like the time machine where you're like, oh, I'm not in the year 2020 right now when I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So it's about, um, it's about a man who uh, he lives in a cabin, and he records solo podcasts on like reel to reel tape because they don't exist yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who's consuming this? No one. Um, dude, that should dude. That is the ultimate Shyamalan reveal. Like we get like we do a montage of like him recording. Like we make it seem like it's going out. Like maybe he's even like an old style like radio guy, and mm-hmm. then like we we like. The, the music or the theme, whatever, stops. We cut. He shuts the reel-to-reel off. He takes the reels off of the recorder, and then he just throws them in the fire. <laughs> <laughs> Coward hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the reveal is that, like, it's it's you. <laughs> it's yeah. you old. And then uh, <laughs> at some point, you, like, you go out and you visit my bones. No, I was... no. My it, bones are just bleached on, like, a rock. <laughs> I was... Yeah, I was thinking that, like, your bones, but I was thinking, like, maybe, like, we reveal that it's me, and then we do some more just, like, day-in-the-life stuff, like I'm cooking an egg for dinner, lights are out. I go down, I, like, walk down into the dark basement, I flick the lights on, and your hung bones are just, like, in the background, <laughs> and I go, hey, Brendan, shut the lights off. <laughs> <laughs> You never took me down. <laughs> no, I never took you down. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a square of carpet underneath it, like box cuttered out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that that could easily be a feature length film. <laughs> <laughs> you come down, you put a party hat on my head, and you're like, Happy New Year's, buddy. <laughs> yeah, numbers are up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, slowly we reveal that it's not a period piece. Yeah, not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just wearing like a like a brown sweater yeah. and like horn rim glasses. Well, it would also be funny if like at some point I'm like uh like like I don't leave the house at all and then at some point I just like go to the front door and check outside and there's just like the whole sheriff's department is out front with guns <laughs> pointed at the house and they're like, "Please come out." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, nope, shut the door. <laughs> yeah, like they <laughs> they want to arrest you badly enough that they'll stake out 24 hours a day. Yeah, they've been there for weeks. Yeah, but they <laughs> but they will not take a step forward. <laughs> How many cans can he have? <laughs> you eat only corned beef hack. Corned beef hack, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's probably the best movie I've ever heard of. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, I think that we could sell that script for a cool six million. Oh, put it on the blacklist, dude. Mm-hmm. Throw that shit on the blacklist. <laughs> <laughs> the blacklist is so stupid. Yeah, I thought there was some prestige to it, and then I realized, like, I think anybody can get a script on the blacklist, right? Like, Well, there's two... The the blacklist is one thing, and then the the website, the blacklist, is another. Like, the blacklist is, I don't know who runs it, but it's somehow curated by, like, industry types where it's, like, the right. best unproduced scripts that year. Right. Um, 
but the the website is you pay it's basically you pay for coverage but not that much coverage well but i thought i was under the impression because there's controversy right now that like shia labeouf like honey boy got made because it was on the blacklist and shia labeouf has submitted his new script to the blacklist and people are like well you just give these to producers dude you're shia labeouf so i I was under the impression that they Mm -hmm. were one in the same that like uh that that the like I, I thought that the blacklist before I knew. Yeah, I mean, uh, I thought I, I heard that he like won a screenwriting competition, which like, I mean, Honey Boy's good. So it's great. It's, yeah, um, I don't know. That's weird. I mean, the whole point of the the website, the blacklist, is uh, like if your script allegedly, and I think maybe a couple movies have been made from it, but it's like anyone can submit from anywhere in the world, and then if your script is good, it'll get passed up the chain, but it's probably just a scam. Yeah. I mean, I tend to think think that most things that you submit to are a scam. Yeah. And I think it's actually kind of like demonstrably true if you look at comedy festivals. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Man, I used to think comedy festivals were so impressive. Dude, it's horseshit. The fact that you pay is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It's it's unconscionable. It's like you, you pay to go and do shows for no one most of the time. Well, and also you, you, they are they're fucking. They should be relying on their ability to put together a festival that people want to come see to generate revenue, not the however many hundred people that they decline and then keep the fifty dollar submission fee. Yeah. Well, I mean, a comedy festival. That sounds great. So you you're gonna book a bunch of headliners? Nope. Well, no, it's gonna be open micers, and and we'll get uh we'll get somebody who did Conan like five years ago to headline a couple shows, and it'll be disconnected. There aren't gonna be that many shows. There's no like centralized area. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the shows are at a fucking like dude. We went to we went to do the Bird City Comedy Festival. Me and my ex friend Phil Bender, <laughs> <laughs> um. And, so, like, we did a show, but the show was, like, in somebody's backyard. And it's like, this is part of the festival? hmm Really? But I got a tote bag. <laughs> Not even. Yeah. <laughs> Although I did, there was a very cute librarian. So, you know what? I support the festival. It was a good festival. <laughs> she liked my set. Mm-hmm. It was a great festival. What am I saying? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I love how you rank events. Like if you if you if you managed to like finger a girl in Auschwitz, you'd be like, that was a pretty good camp. <laughs> if I definitely one of my better vacations. So funny that that is my priority in Auschwitz. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> come on, it's not that bad. Like it's we got we have to make the best of this situation. Yeah. <laughs> was there? Uh, can we do this? Was there fucking in Auschwitz? Um, I think that people were way too tired to fuck Brennan. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that I, I would I, look. I'm not gonna say I'm no historian. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna say there was no fucking. Matter of fact, there probably was some it fucking. Probably wasn't between consenting parties. Yeah, I yeah. Imagine. There probably was. There, there actually almost definitely was fucking in Auschwitz. <laughs> and now that I think it over, yeah. Nigh on a hundred percent. Have you seen? Have you? Have I talked? Have you seen the Paul Schrader movie Adam Resurrected, where Jeff Goldblum gets sent to Auschwitz, and um, he was like he was like a magician in Berlin, and then and he like when the Nazis when they were taking over, but they weren't rounding people up yet, and Willem Dafoe plays a Nazi, and like he does some illusion on Willem Dafoe that like. Is so beautiful that Willem Dafoe starts crying and is then embarrassed. So then uh, Jeff Goldblum gets sent to Willem Dafoe's concentration camp in Dachau, mm-hmm. and Willem Dafoe forces him to be a human dog for two years. <laughs> and he keeps <laughs> he keeps promising him. He's like, "If you're a good dog, I'll, I'll let you see your family again." And then, like you know, like years later, like finally, his name is Adam. Um, he's like, "When am I going to get to see my family?" And he's like, "Adam, they died." <laughs> he's like, "A long time ago." And then he puts a bone in his mouth. It is one of the most <laughs> horrific, horrific movies I've ever seen. This is obscene. <clears throat> yeah, well, that's just in the past. And then, but, but it's still this. It's still <laughs> Paul Schrader has such a 
a wide spectrum of work. Yes, and I, I guarantee you... That sounds like a Louis C.K. script. Well, it, it definitely is because it flashes back and forth between him at Auschwitz and then, like, at this rehabil- this mental rehabilitation facility in Israel in the 60s. And it's what's funny is, like, even though he has this horrific backstory, he's still, like, it's kind of like One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest or K-Pax where he's, like, you know, or, like, fucking Patch Adams almost, where he's, like, uh-huh. inspiring Holocaust survivors to, like, be silly and do magic. And he starts fucking the nurses. <laughs> it's really, it's really. There, there's, there, there's this nurse who he's fucking, and they're not supposed to be fucking each other. It's a mental hazard. And like, like literally, people over, like, uh, people from the board come. They're in. not supposed to be. They're not fucking. supposed to be fucking. People from the board of like uh, benefactors or whatever to this special hospital come in, and they see that Adam is like, you know. Uh, inspiring chaos and kissing the nurses, and they're talking. To the, they're talking to the doctor, and they're like, "Shouldn't you stop him from doing that?" And the doctor's like, "I can't." <laughs> he fucks this nurse, and he makes her act like a dog. It is a very strange movie. <laughs> Then he gets all gusted up and clown. Paul Schrader <laughs> is so horny. Yeah, nobody was asking Paul Schrader to make... Paul Schrader, not a Jewish man at all. Really, this was not his story to tell. God, the way he posts on Facebook, oh. it's like he does not know that goes out. Oh, he, well, he totally does because he, he, made a, he made a status saying, like, does anybody know, on here know where I, at 75, can get acid? <laughs> he's, he's, he wants to try acid at 75, and then the very next status was like, I got a letter from Oliver Stone telling me that it was a bad idea. <laughs> like, he, goes, he goes, but I'm still looking. The, the letter from, he posts it, the letter from Oliver Stone says, Paul, uh, while I understand this impulse and think that for some younger men it might be a good idea, uh, I would love to refer to you to a drug dealer or a shaman, but all the ones that I know died 10 years ago. <laughs> like, <laughs> he basically says, you are too old to drop acid and too old to ask for it on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Paul Schrader, he's just any of our grandpas on Facebook with millions of dollars. Millions of dollars and, like, <laughs> industries. Uh, did you see his seeking arrangements? No. So he's still so horny. So he's it, seeking arrangements, I guess, is this thing where, like, you basically can arrange to have, like, the company of a woman. And I guess it's not explicitly sexual, but I think it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And it's a profile pic of him wearing a toupee because Paul Schrader is a horrifically bald man. But he, <laughs> he has on, like, he's got on a toupee, clearly not his hair, like, not even the same color as his mustache. Yeah. And and he's, he's like, well, it's a good thing I'm not famous or anything. <laughs> yeah. And he's and he's like it, it does the the bio is something like just a shy humble guy who's who's like won multiple Academy Awards and has traveled the world. If this interests you, please drop me a line. And he posted on Facebook like, "Ladies, any takers?" <laughs> <laughs> Paul Schrader is fucking awesome because I, there's there's I love him so much. There's no distance like like when you when you watch Martin Scorsese like. Uh, talk about a film that he's directed it's like okay like there's clearly an intellectual man behind these like characters and situations that he's that he's creating in these films there is zero distance between paul schrader and his work like like yeah. he, he is he is his characters <laughs> <laughs> what do you think travis bickle's online presence would be like F- fucking paul schrader <laughs> 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 Well, he even, like, Paul Schrader, he becomes, like, obsessed with the women that he works with. Mm-hmm. Much like Travis and fucking Jodie Foster. Yeah. He, like, there's that, there are all those stories of him, like, when he was shooting The Canyons um, with Lindsay Lohan. Apparently, like, he had to, like, he was trying to, like, seduce her every day to come out of her room and shoot because she didn't want to shoot the movie. <laughs> so, like, he, he developed this weird, like, cuckold relationship with her just to get her to do her job. <laughs> I don't understand at all what you just told me. <laughs> oh, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> like, what would he be like outside of her trailer, waggling his penis? No, not so explicit. But, but, but he he basically <laughs> he had to like entice her to come on set, and he he became like romantically, very like romantically obsessed with her. I think. I think I don't think he would characterize it that way. But every interview that you read with him in that time. 
He's like obsessed with Lindsay Lohan. That's the movie that had James Dean in it, right? Yeah, it's the one that had James Dean in it. So he probably like he he must have cast that just watching porn, and he's like, this guy, this kid has it. Absolutely. <laughs> Do you know how there are so many Paul Schrader movies where like the characters possess an encyclopedic knowledge of porn, <laughs> <laughs> and we know that he is his character. It's like <laughs> that'd be funny if he did a deeper cut. <laughs> He's like Lex Steele is in this one. <laughs> well, dude, he invented the first the fucking uh have you have you seen Hardcore yet? Uh no. There's a part where George C. Scott has to his daughter gets kidnapped um and is like on a church trip and she's sold into like you know, black market pornography. She might be in like a snuff film. So he's posing as like a porn director and he's uh, he's auditioning people. And one of the guys is this this guy named, this black guy named Dick Black. <laughs> <laughs> he has the biggest dick in porn. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's very funny because it is a scene that has absolutely, it doesn't even pay off. Like that doesn't end up working out for, it's just a scene in the movie. It's very racist. <laughs> and then we just move on. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of like Polly. Yeah. <laughs> he's like Dick Black. You hear what I said? <laughs> yes, yeah, that's how it goes. <laughs> I named the black fella Dick Black. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny. Uh, and he gets turned down. Uh, George C. Scott says that he's not what they're looking for. And then Dick Black goes, why? He's like, because you're black. And he goes, man, fuck you. And he leaves. <laughs> That's the whole scene. <laughs> Why'd they let him audition? I, do, I, I have no idea. Do you think, like, uh, when you audition for porn, which I don't think happens, um, do, do you think you go in, you hand them your little, like, manila folder, and they open it, and it has your, like, uh, your list of work, and then it has the little, uh, the little black and white headshot paper clipped in, and then next to it another headshot of just your dick. <laughs> I wouldn't be, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised, but you could be deceiving with that. Yeah, you could, you could, you, you could put the camera really close or like blow it mm-hmm. up on a Xerox. <laughs> I'm pretty. <laughs> you go in there like, all right, and you, and you have the sides. <laughs> We're going to be doing a cold read. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then you just jack off? From from what I understand about, like, what I've watched from these porn documentaries is, like, men don't audition for porn. If you're a man and you want to get into porn, what you do is you buy a house in Florida and you convince, wet, like, girls to come live in your house and you fuck them on camera, mm-hmm. promising that you'll make a name for them, but you make a name for yourself. Like, that's, like, everything that I've seen for, like, Hot Girls Wanted, like, all this shit. That just seems to be the move. It also, I mean... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it seems like uh, like probably the majority of porn is just the girl shows up. There's a man with a camera who fucks her. Maybe he has two cameras if we're getting real fancy. Yeah, and uh, it's then unclear where it gets released or if it does. Yeah, I think a lot of porn doesn't get released. Like actually, mm-hmm. it's it's a fucking we we've talked about this before we've talked about my experience on the porn set but it's fucking weird dude porn is fucking weird yeah porn like you'd think at you'd think like we're we're starting to get hollywood that's good we're starting to clean that up but i feel like i mean porn is just like monstrous well b- porn is is weird because nobody wants to acknowledge the fact that like there there is clearly horrible stuff going on because it's simul the the biggest people in the industry like the most popular porn stars female porn stars really touted as like this empowering like industry that benefited them a lot and like they wouldn't and that's true for them but to not acknowledge that there's like a really dark unregulated underbelly to the video sex industry Mm -hmm. just seems kind of fucked up and dishonest yeah it's nice that there's now like uh porn content creators i'll never pay for any of it Mm -hmm. but uh (laughs) like the fact that like people are making their own stuff and putting it on you like uh Pornhub and stuff. Yeah. Cuz I mean realistically like why were some guy with like a mini DV camera why was why was anyone paying him to do it? Yeah, we've democratized porn. Yeah, porn is like horribly produced. Yeah. There's no barrier to entry. It's horrible, and uh, yeah, you're right. Like uh, like honestly, yeah, it's it's way better. I I think it's way more <laughs> the ethical future of porn definitely feels like 
like these couple channels that you see where it's like a couple fucking each other and mm-hmm. they love each other very much, I assume. I mean, to be doing that, I would hope that they do. Because <laughs> that's a- I've watched some of those. Um, there's uh, There's some specific channels where it's like, it's hard to tell because all porn is lying to you, but it's mm-hmm. like, we're a female owned company and uh, then they have like girl film students like, we're the crew. Right. And they're, and they're like, and we film real couples. They interview the couples and sometimes they're like, and how long have you guys been together? And they're like, around 10 months. And I'm like, that is not long enough. That's really dicey. <laughs> Stop doing this. <laughs> One of my favorite porn stars, uh, I think she stopped and, like, all her stuff gets, like, flagged with takedown notices somehow because... Uh, what, Mia Khalifa? No. Um, what, fuck, what is it? Uh, Blanc Noor. Um, Don't know her. But uh, I think her and the guy broke up, and then she stopped doing it. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I mean, I would understandably... Uh, I would be upset if someone, like, broke my heart and then videos of me fucking them had millions of views. Yeah, that would be rough. <laughs> no, just don't. I mean, it, it's just a dicey thing. Like you would think that, like, yeah, you mm-hmm. gotta, you gotta wait. You either have, you either have to be. It either has to be somebody you're not in a relationship with, whom you trust, but like, or somebody where you're like, yeah, we're not gonna break up. Mm. But even still, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's very weird. <laughs> I had I had some thought. I was thinking of a specific... Oh, no. What I was going to say, it's weird, like, how it seems to be now that, like, porn doesn't even fuck with, like, mainstream success anymore. Not that, like, Adam-22 and No Jumper are, like... uh, Not like they have, like, traditional Hollywood careers, but, like, that guy had, like, a, a podcast, and he has, like, a fucking, like, clothing store on Melrose, and that was what he was known for first. And then him and his girlfriend just started, like fucking each other like they started like fucking each other and uploading it on to Pornhub and that's just like another avenue that they make money in now and mm-hmm. like they still have this image of like they still like fucking like hang out with like YouTubers they're still considered like YouTubers <laughs> even though you can just watch them fuck on Pornhub you shouldn't yeah I mean I mean they're not bad looking people but, but... <laughs> or even like fucking what is his other content like is it like uh like general YouTube content where he's like, sup, YouTube, I'm here unboxing my yes. balls. Yes, yeah. No, well, yeah, yeah. Well, no, sometimes it'll, sometimes, like, it'll start out with, like, an innocuous enough, like, YouTube-style video, like, yo, like, Fit Check, or, like, we, like we're like we unboxing these new sneakers, or, like, I'm showing you on the No Jumper store, because he runs a legitimate business, like, a clothing <laughs> store. And then sometimes, like, midway through the video, a bunch of, like, YouTubers and porn stars that they're friends with will come over. He's like, all right, if you want to see the rest of this, head over to Pornhub and <laughs> watch us fuck. <laughs> Which is weird, because, like, they're they are hanging out. The fact that, like, he's hanging out with, like... That'd be funny if, like, other YouTubers say, like, all right, now I'm about to fuck Smosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of like that, because, like, in one video, he's hanging out with, like, you know, the Pauls and fucking David Dobrik, and that's content aimed at, like, younger kids... So now they're directly related to these people who are fucking pornographers. It's weird. You know, like, it's definitely weird. Huh. Well, that doesn't sit right with me. It, Someone needs to check the back of that store. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the podcast studio is. <laughs> Sometimes they do fuck back there, actually. <laughs> I don't know how many hours I've consumed. <laughs> it's hard to say how much of this I've watched. I would estimate. I would say. Uh, I don't know. I don't understand. Do you sleep? Because somehow you've seen every movie, every YouTube channel. <laughs> I just you're, you're constantly watching live streams of bullshit. Yeah, factory accidents. <laughs> Wait, I, live streams of factory accidents? Oh, I thought you said live leak. <laughs> that would be funny if, like, <laughs> it's like, uh, guy dies in forklift accident, real death, and then you click on it, it's like, is this live? <laughs> yeah, there's a countdown. <laughs> it's like a David Blaine event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does Twitch have rules? Are you allowed to die on stream? You are not allowed to die. <laughs> you you might be able to trick some people into seeing it, but I think they will remove it. <laughs> what if it's of natural causes? Uh, I think they'll... St- I don't... I mean... If I go on Twitch and I hold my breath until I die, what are they going to do? Look, Brendan, no, what, are you going to demonetize me? I'm in heaven. Can't bring it with you, bitch. 
was going to say, no matter what you do to die on Twitch, you're not going to get in trouble. <laughs> so. I just, I'm smugly dying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I I guess that I just started, uh, yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I'm kind of an information sponge, but only recently, like, have I decided that, like, I should be using it to be, like, politically educated. <laughs> because before, I was just, literally, I would just watch, like, you know, like, uh, fucking video game reviews for, like, eight hours a day. And now I'm like, I should figure out what's going on in Belarus. <laughs> like, I, I, sh- I should just know more about what's going on in the world. But that would ruin the whole podcast. Uh, if you became an informed man, I, I, I I'm trying. I'm kind of trying to be informed. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm so happy that like uh, we settled on that for the branding because for the longest time I was like, how do I even describe what Coward Hour is? And then I, when we started leaning into the we're wrong angle, I was mm-hmm. like, oh, it all makes sense. I don't know if I'm wrong anymore. Is the problem? <laughs> <laughs> I really, like, I'm up at 3 a.m. just, like, watching protesters clash with pr- police in, like, European countries, and I'm just like, Ooh, okay, all right, things are bad. Things are really bad. I should have been, like, yeah, I can't go back to Mario Galaxy speedruns. Oh, I'm happy for you. Yeah. <laughs> should we go? go oh, yeah, are we at an hour? Uh, yeah. All right. It's an hour. All right, guys. All right. Uh, that is... The show. Knock, knock, open up, it's me, the crazy shady faded fucker, so rock the G's. I see a lady make a baby, lead her on in peace. Only time I give a fuck is for my own release. That's why I own these streets. Straight up, portfolio, showing growth, fuck a pay cut. Yeah, you know I stay slut. Catch me in the spot, looping up for the self suck. Oh fuck, I busted already, I'm coming bucket so heavy. My dream of cream coming steady, now my mouth open, I'm ready. I'm talking solo heavy, petting on a Friday night. Talking bashing the bishop, more like that tugger's delight. I'm Nick taking all the time tonight. I need to do it just right. Got my candles in the fishnets, cause it's on tonight. Oh, that's right, it's time to fillet. No need to debate me, I suck until I go ooh wee and spray my white pee pee. I got that ski ski ski. Oh.